there are six patents listed under the inventor Salvatore Pius. As I was re-looking through all the information, I noticed pattern changes. Now the inventor has a middle name and his middle name is Cesar. Salvatore Cesar Pius. What's interesting is that under Google Patents, four of the patents are listed with first name, first, last name, second, and two of the patents are listed with the middle name Cesar. Now when you get down here to the last two, you'll see that the middle name is now included. Uh, basically, I look through all the differences in how these this was presented, the inventor names, the, the, the patents. I look through information, the information on the inventions themselves. And my, my interesting conclusion is there's messages that are communicated to us in subtext, sometimes because they can't be made public for whatever reason. Then we have to interpret that information and rely on that inner sense to determine is that or is that not true for for you or for me. Uh, so I'm just going to present what I see. You can determine if it's true for you, but I thought it was pretty interesting. And to me, um, there's, there's actually something here. But let's go to the actual definition of Caesar. Obviously, it's um, a title used by the Roman emperors. But the other thing about Caesar is that it means that the Caesar in Roman times was an autocrat. The thing about an autocrat is that it is an autocrat is a ruler with absolute power. There's also sort of these darker shades of insisting on complete obedience, um, imperious or domineering. I'm not saying anything in particular about this person. I just want to make that clear. I'm interpreting shades of meaning, so this is nothing personal about the inventor. What I want to say is that the inventor's name together, Salvatore Paez, I translated as the will to save our country. The name Caesar has a, well, it's, it's very respectable, right? Your rulers can be very respected, but it can also reflect a darker side. The, the combination of all these words together in the name reflect a whole one that's balanced. And um, let's take a deeper look at this. So I'm, I want to be clear that there's nothing here personal about this person. I've never met them and I don't know them. I don't know if they're a real person either. <laughs> at any rate, I think there's a message here about these last two bits of technology. These were both filed in 2017 and both published in 2019. What happened in 2017? This is the first year that President Trump was president and the first year that he implemented his way in the military. There's a big truth movement associated with President Trump. You may or may not agree with that, but certainly there are a lot of truths that are coming to the surface of various kinds. Maybe you can agree just with that point. So let's see what truth that might be revealed by the addition of the name Caesar to both of these patents. I'm going to use Google Translate to interpret the name just like I did with the first and last name. This is pretty cool. Check this out. So C E this through criminal Caesar. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's pretty wild. What does that mean? When I've looked through these various inventions, the sacred geometries upon which these are based on, and that's I see sacred geometries as underlying physics. And when I look at these sacred geometries, these look to me to be reflective of not, not this one, this one, this one, and this one to be reflective of what I would call sort of the new sacred geometry. When I look at this one, check this out. This is kind of cool. When I look at this one, you know what this looks like to me? This was um, a sort of regular propulsion system that had laser added to it. So it was taking an older, it looked to me like it was taking an older technology and, and adding something fancier to it. Um, this looks like maybe even the bottom of a bus or the bottom of a boat, maybe a more advanced bus or boat or ship. Um, that's what it looked like to me. And it's rectangular shape. This is the older patent from 2006. 
these ones. Um, this, the geometries of, of this, this, this here. Um, these geometries of the next three, they're based on what I would call upgraded sacred geometries. Um, I don't want to get into that right now, but I've been studying this for many years and their correlation with quantum physics, sacred geometries, cor correlation with quantum physics. And to me, these are more advanced new, um, designs. Okay. I'll just say that. Now, when I look at this here, check this out. You know what this looks like to me? This looks like to me, this is a technology. In my view, this technology is more, I would call it fourth dimensional. The geometry that this is built on is an older design. I realize that that most people would look at this and say, wow, this is brand new and it's innovative. But in the grander scheme of things, this is a compressed, um, this, this invention is based on compressed geometries, sacred geometries, um, which underlie all, all life and all creation. Um, this geometry is compressed and uh, therefore it is fourth dimensional. It's not, um, it's not higher dimensional than that. Whereas geometries like this, like this and like this, there's an application here where, where there's a launching point, um, in terms of their design into more expanded dimensional spaces. I guess I'll just say that not this one though. So what I'm wondering is if there is appropriated technology, say that we've recovered crash ships or whatever. I think that it's most likely that this would be one of those. That's what I'm saying. Now this invention here is interesting. The first thing I thought when I saw this was it reminded me of the way that the Tesla machines are um, built. The, the Tesla, the very large Tesla coils. And I had the fascinating experience of actually coming face to face with one of these machines in a very odd area <laughs> where you wouldn't expect one to be. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> keep keep watching the videos. Maybe we'll get to that one. Um, but anyway, that's what this reminded me of. The way that um, the way that the wrapping is. And I'm going to show you a picture of that here. Okay, here is an image of a Tesla coil. What you have here is this wire wrapped around. Okay. And then you have this toroid added on and you see this electricity generated. That's, um, typical image that you'd see of, um, Tesla's devices. We'll get to that in a second. Here is a picture of the man himself. And then here's a picture, um, from inside his lab. You can see here, do you see how this device here is wrapped like that with the wires. Okay. If we take a look here and you see that wrapping there, I don't know for sure. I'm not a, um, high tech scientist in my current lifetime. Um, <laughs> I'm just guessing here. This is my feeling on it. So here's what I was wondering about these last two pant patents. What I was wondering is, what if this is technology that is sort of from secret space program, but at a time when it was being run by people who maybe didn't have the best interests of the country in mind, I don't know, or maybe they had self-interest in mind. Or maybe these patents were in some way related to a time when secret space programs or advanced technology programs were autocratically run. And maybe this design, I wonder if it was adopted in part from ideas related to Tesla's original inve inventions. The government has those papers. Why wouldn't we produce research off of it and eventually make the patents public when the time was right? If you have your own thoughts on it. 
or you'd like to add to what I'm saying, email me at my contact page on my website. I, sh- I would love to take a look at whatever you have to say there, as long as it's polite and additive, but otherwise I will be deleting it. Um, yeah. Yeah.